Memphis, Tennessee. We're here at Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee, and Alicia Dean is the public relations coordinator, and she's made arrangements for us to get a tour. And we're very excited about this. Great, I am too. Well, tell me about the history of the mansion. Wow, there's so much history here. Not only when Elvis lived here, but actually, did you know that there were people that actually lived in the house before he owned it? The house was built in 1939, and Elvis didn't buy it until 1957. So there was a family that lived on this 600-acre farm, and Elvis only purchased about 13, 14 acres of the land when he bought Graceland. Well, it's magnificent. It is. <laughs> now, you've spread out across the street and you have your visitor center there with yes. all kinds of stores and shops. Yes. So people can uh, go there and prepare and then get bust over as we see in the background here. Absolutely. And there's more to see, not only just the mansion, but we also have a car museum. We also have Elvis's airplanes that I hear that you're very fond of. Yes, I am. <laughs> Available spaces. Okay, this is the living room. Oh, so cool. And this is the first room that you see when you come on the tour. And I think it's the most beautiful room in the home. It really is. With, with the blue and the white. Um, this room was probably most used for when Elvis had guests over. He would come greet them here. Um, but a lot of entertaining went on in this room. As you can see, uh, the room through the living room, that's what we call the music room. Uh, one of three pianos sit in the room today. Um, Elvis had a lot of, you know, just impromptu jam sessions. You know, Elvis played the piano by ear. He never took music classes. And the one class he did take in high school, middle school, he failed music. No kidding. I know. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but there's a 15-foot custom-made sofa with a 10-foot custom-made coffee table. Um, the beautiful thing about what we have here at Graceland is that the Presleys grew up in the Great Depression, so they kept everything. And we have everything from grocery lists to receipts, and we even have receipts to these stained glass peacock windows that you see in the room. What do they cost? Um, that's a great question. I bet our archivists would know. Okay. But, but, they're, but you know, when Elvis purchased Graceland, do you know how much he bought it for? No, I have no it idea. Was, it was $102,500. Wow. In 19... 19... In 1957. So if you can only imagine... So a Volkswagen back in those days uh, was, I think, $1,800? Probably. Yeah. A brand new. <laughs> okay. So but, so this is this is one of the, I think, the most beautiful rooms in the home that Elvis sure actually... Is. You know, used a lot, and if these walls could talk, they could probably tell stories upon stories upon stories about Elvis just being himself. And that's one thing. Elvis is the most photographed person probably in all the world. And he was a genuine nice guy. Exactly. But, you know, what's interesting is that we don't really have a lot of photos of Elvis in Graceland. This was like his private mecca, if you will. I mean, it's just a wonderful place for him to just get away and be himself. Okay, well, we are standing in the dining room. And I know it looks extremely formal, but the Presleys would eat dinner here. And sometimes they would even pull up card tables on the end because they would have so many people here coming over for dinner. Um, they didn't have formal dinners every single night. Um, but an interesting fact is that Elvis used to sit at the end of the table and underneath the table is a button and it would buzz the kitchen even though the kitchen is right next door. So if you ever needed anything, there was that extra button. Another interesting fact is that if you notice there also is a television that sits in the dining room and for the 50s it, it was rare that people even had televisions and Elvis had, this is one of 14 that sat throughout the homes. Elvis wow. had 14 TVs that sat in Graceland. Um, he was an RCA recording artist and RCA gave him anything he wanted and that's why we have so many TVs. That's neat. neat. <laughs> We are now in the jungle room, and this room is so unique because it has both carpet on both the floor and the ceiling, which made it great acoustics for this room. So Elvis actually recorded part of two albums in here. He recorded live from Elvis Presley Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, and Moody Blue. So not only is this room um, unique, but also historic because Elvis actually performed here, which was really neat. Um, all of the furniture was purchased at one time from a local Memphis department store. Um, it's kind of a Polynesian style furniture, it reminded him of Hawaii, and Elvis loved Hawaii. He vacationed in Hawaii, he filmed three movies in Hawaii, um, so it was just a, a great way to bring Hawaii to Memphis. So Elvis, Elvis didn't actually call it the Jungle Room. Uh, this room to him was called the Den, um, just as many people had back in the 50s and 60s, and a travel writer came through in 1982 when we opened for tours and nicknamed it the Jungle Room and the name has stuck since. 
we do have four horses on property and we keep it that way because Elvis loved horses and that love for horses came from Priscilla. And if you were a family member, or close friend of Elvis, you got a horse. And that came with the, the whole shebang, with, with the saddle and everything that you needed to ride that horse. And he loved riding horses. He was known for just hopping on a horse and riding down to the front gate and signing autographs for his fans. He really loved his fans and really cared about them because he knew that they were the reason that he was, you know, who he was. So we still have horses on property today. Two of them were actually rescue horses and Priscilla had a hand in rescuing both of them. Well, Quinn, he was a very generous man. He was, he was very generous. And I think that's one thing that people take away from the tour that they might not have known about Elvis before. We actually have two uh, frames of checks. There were 40 checks all written for $1,000 each on one day. So $40,000 in one day given to local and national charities. All right, so we are now standing in Elvis's racquetball building. In this building, Elvis actually personally watched over the construction of the building. He was so excited about building this racquetball building. And it cost him about $200,000 on this one building alone. So remember back when I told you in 1957 how much he purchased the house for? Right. And then how much this one building cost? Well, that must have been years later though, right? Now, this building was finished in 1975. Okay, sure. So almost 20 sense. years later. Um, but everything that you see in here is original. There's actually a piano that's down the stairs right here to our right. That um, This was the last thing Elvis did before he passed away. He came in and he played racquetball with some friends and then sat down at the piano and played a couple songs and then went back upstairs and unfortunately passed away. So again, this is the racquetball building and everything that you see in here, um, Elvis has received since he's passed away. So all of these gold records and awards, we're still getting. Elvis is probably one of the biggest selling entertainers of all time. Over one billion records sold and keep selling. It's amazing. Um, we also have a display of some of our jumpsuits. We have about 80 in our collection and probably the, one of the most famous is the American Eagle jumpsuit that you can also see. Um, that Elvis wore in Aloha from Hawaii. Alicia, this is the ultimate toy. This is the ultimate toy. Not many celebrities even back then had their own custom-made airplane. So this was a Delta plane. Yes, Convair 880, built in 1958. And it held 96 passengers. 96 passengers, and then Elvis bought it for $250,000 and then spent $800,000 customizing the inside of the plane. It's just incredible. Describe the inside of the plane. Wow, the inside of the plane is amazing. It has everything from a bedroom to a conference room, to a lounge area. Um, there were also telephones on board that you could call anywhere in the world. Simply amazing. There was also a 24 karat gold inlay on both the seat belts and also the sinks in the bathroom. So cool. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's also named after his daughter, Lisa Marie. And its nickname is? The Hound Dog One. And he changed the N numbers to Oh gosh, do you remember? Yes, Echo Papa <laughs> or Elvis Presley. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you very much for the tour. We've had a delightful thank time you. and thank we really you for appreciate being it. Here. I hope you had a great time. We did.